we've been studying some very very important tips on leadership and today we are learning from Samson. I tie to it, learn from Samson. Learn. Some will say learn, some will say learn. Learn from Samson. And I'll be speaking about, about five truths, or four truths that we should learn from Samson. Four major truths I want us to learn from the life of Samson that will help us to sharpen our leadership skill. Take your seats gladly. Let your hearts be ready. Let your jaw class be ready. And make sure you get a message. The first major truth I want us to learn from the life of Samson will be taken from Judges chapter 13 and verse 5. Judges chapter 13 verse 5. The Bible says, For lo, thou shalt conceive and bear his son, and no razor shall come on his head. For the child, okay, it's on the screen, for lo, thou shalt conceive and bear his son, and no razor shall come on his head. For the child shall be a Nazarite unto God from the womb. And he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. For he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. Truth number one, we should learn from Samson is that you were not born without a purpose. Understand this clearly. Nobody is born without a purpose. You were born for a purpose. Every one of us should understand that our coming to the art is not as a result of the desires of our parents. That, oh, I just want to have a child and a child came. Every one of us that are born are born with an assignment. We are all born with what? An assignment. We are born to become something and to do something on that. And listen, the tragedy of life is this. For a man to live through the whole art and not discover talkless of fulfilling his purpose. So if there's anything you should find first in this life, find God. And once you found God, find your purpose. Why did God allow me to be born? Why was I sent to the earth? Now look at the life of Samson. Look at the package of his life in one verse. In Nazareth, yes, he set apart. Unto the Lord, yes. Now, no reason will touch his head. Instruction guided his life. But to summarize it, he says, I am, I am raising him to bring Israel deliverance from the hand of the Philistine. Not from the Amalekite, not from the Canaanite. So if Samson had fought another battle, he will, it will have been out of God's purpose for his life. Have you discovered it? You know, yesterday, when I was preparing for this meeting, the thing kept ringing in my heart. Pastor Prince Will Afolabi is raised, raised by God to bring the message of truth that will eradicate ignorance from the body of Christ. That's why I cannot do without teaching. <laughs> Excuse me. I want to enlighten somebody's, I want to open somebody's eyes, I want people to have new form of thinking. You must understand, you were born with a purpose. You were born for a reason. Now, and when we talk about born, born, being born with a purpose, you know, I too will have been confused if I had not studied the book of Exodus where God talked about the life of Bezalel. Now, you know, when we say born with a purpose, you used to think it's only people that are called into ministry. Ah, I want to learn, okay, since she and she, no, but when God started speaking to Moses about Bezali, God said, the reason why Bezali is born is because he will become a designer. Now, and he will design with wood, he will design with stones, he will design with melter, anything that can make, bring beautiful designs. We we'll talk about Bezali. That was his calling. A lot of things. Then I was studying scriptures too. And I discovered the Issachars, the men of Issachar. They were born with the, the, the talent and calling of interpreting times and seasons. That was their calling. You know, and I also saw this scripture. I discovered that uh, uh, Aitofel was David's counselor. And what was his calling? To usher in counsel. Now, you must discover why you are born. 
It is not necessary that everybody will become a pastor, an evangelist. Are you getting what I'm saying? Some of us are called into the banking industry to, to you know, to, to do exploits in that industry and represent Jesus for it. So, it is a tragedy for a person not to understand his purpose. Understand why God has even planted you in this church. Why are you here? Why are you in this ministry? Where were you born? Now, we have people called into the entertainment world. If you see them, you will know that this one is a calling. It's not that they just want to do it. They are called into it. And I've taught you here severally. Your calling is whatsoever you know how to do or finds easy to do that you were not taught. You only go to fine-tune by learning. Hello? No, they didn't teach you. You just have this understanding of these things, but you go fine-tune it in order to become a skillful at it. Hallelujah. So he was born the deliverer of Israel from the hand of the Philistines. And I wrote here again, I've quoted it, the greatest tragedy of life is to run the race of life without identifying or fulfilling your destiny. Very important. Second truth that we need to learn from the life of Samson. Truth number two. Can I go on? It is important you know that the devil is doing everything to try to distract you from your purpose. I learned this from something I will show you as I go on. It is important to know that the devil is doing everything to try to distract you from fulfilling your purpose. Now, and when I say everything, it could be everything. The devil could use a child to distract you. The devil could use marriage to distract you. The devil could use, you know, just like the case of that woman with the issue of blood. For 12 good years, her health condition did not allow her focus on any other thing. So, if there's anything the devil is trying to do, the devil wants to distract you. I want you to understand that. Register that. He wants to distract you. He wants to... And listen, he succeeded to distract a, 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 a Samson from fulfilling his purpose. And you know what the devil did? He used what Samson loved. Go search scriptures. You will see that every attack on Samson was based on the things that Samson loved. Let's start from the first one. The Bible says he went to the land of the Philistines. He saw a woman and just came back home and told the daddy, I love this woman. Ah, my daddy, I love this one. You find that in Judges chapter 14. Let's read it. 1 to 3. Judges chapter 14. 1 to 3. Look at the first major distraction. That's why here I want you to pay attention as an individual, as a leader. What are your distractions? And something went down to Timnat and saw a woman in Timnat of the daughter of the Philistines. Now he saw at first and he came up and told his father and his mother and said, I have seen a woman in Timnat of the daughters of the Philistines. Now therefore get her for me to wife. I need to marry her. Verse 3, get her for me. Then his father and his mother said unto him, Is there never a woman among the daughters of thy brethren or among all my people that thou goest to take a wife of the uncircumcised Philistine? And Samson said unto his father, Get her for me. For what? For she pleased me. Can you see? The devil will never try to use what you don't like to distract you. He knows you will not be distracted. If he uses the method of bringing or introducing to you what you don't like. So he brought this woman's issue. So that Samson will not focus on his purpose. I'm asking you, what are your distractions? A lot of us are not fulfilling the reason why we were born. And the reason is because we are giving our attention to so many things that the devil has raised as methods of distractions to us. Another time, when he escaped that one, look at in Judges chapter 16 verse 1. The Bible says this particular day he was coming again. He saw the, the house of the alot and Samson went down again into an alot. Now, all this while, you know what the devil was doing? The devil was taking Samson to a place of the trap. I'm coming somewhere. Then went Samson to Gaza and saw there an alot and went in unto her. He started from the girl, then from a harlot. Then look at the third one that really trapped him. Go again to the book of Judges chapter 16 and verse 4. 
Judges chapter 16 and verse 4. Yes. And it came to pass afterward that he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek whose name was what? Delilah. Now, I'm going to take my time to explain this Delilah stuff so that every one of us can learn. Now, look at how the devil started with distraction. He saw a beautiful girl. From a beautiful girl, he saw an alert. The reason why the devil was doing all these things, hear me, the devil was trying to trap something. But to, he, there was no how he would have trapped something if he had not started to inject distractions gradually. Am I communicating? My father, get her for me for she pleased me. He was distracted. Now, the man who was supposed to be the deliverer of Israel did not fight the Philistines because of Israel for once. A man who was supposed to say, okay, God has given me strength. Let us gather together an army so that we can be delivered because his assignment was deliver the Israelites out of the hand of the Philistine. But look at his first fight. His first fight was for what? To defend the woman. He fought for that woman. The Philistines now went ahead to kill the woman, her father, and everybody. Samson got angry again. He went and fought and destroyed a lot of them. The second time he was fighting, he went again to the house of the Alot. As he was coming out, they surrounded him. He fought and fought and fought. Samson did not fulfill his purpose. Do you know why? He allowed himself to be distracted. Now, I want to speak to us today. The, the, the main distraction that now led him into captivity was Delilah. Who is Delilah? Now, when we hear Delilah, a lot of men, we think about what? Women. Be careful of Delilah. When they say, be careful of Delilah, if you see a sister dressing in there, I'll say, ah, Delilah, it's a day. Now, what then should the ladies say? If they say, be careful of Delilah, maybe the ladies will be thinking that, well, maybe it's one unbeliever that is rich trying to use money to entice me or as we do call them in our house we call them the paplos when you say delilah ah, sister be careful of paplo niel but listen delilah may not be a paplo bro it may not be delilah may not even be a lady delilah can be something you love that is destroying you I come again. Delilah can be what? Something you love. Something you have given your heart to. You love it so much, but this particular thing is destroying your integrity. This thing is destroying your purpose. This thing is shifting your focus, but you love it. Now, that's one of the best ways I can explain who Delilah is to you. Because you find it easy to criticize something. Can you imagine? But, but Samson, you know some people say, Samson, imagine, how can a lady be telling you, tell me the secret of your power? You told him, you told that a lie, and all of a sudden some Philistines showed up. You should understand that it's a setup. Do you know that your own Delilah may not be a lady? It may be a plastic bottle of drink. You are struggling with your insulin, you know that you are not balanced with your sugar line, but you can't stop, you can't put down that plastic bottle of drink. That's your Delilah. It wants to stop you from fulfilling purpose. You are saying, I know that this thing is hurting me. Anytime I take this thing, I take this thing, I go to ease and we and we and we and we, I, I we, I we, in fact, I'm just, you know, and in fact, my doctors have told me that I need to take insulin, but still, every single time you see it, you can't say no. That's your Delilah. And don't forget the purpose of Delilah. You are the one in love of, with Delilah. Delilah doesn't love you. Delilah has a purpose. And what is the purpose is to stop you from fulfilling your own God-given destiny. Hello, am I communicating? Some of you, your Delilah may not even be a plastic bottle of drink. Your Delilah could be the friends you are keeping. It could be a habit in your life. Leaders, I'm talking to us this morning. Your Delilah may be a habit. Your Delilah may be an association. Do you know that I took time to study the scriptures and I discovered that the Delilah of Esau was his, was his love for food. He got on that day. 
I wrote a quote because of those that will take note of it. When I get to that point, I will read it to you so that you can help me hype it. He got home that day. He was hungry. His brother prepared a red, Bible calls it red pottage. Some versions will say red steel. He wanted food. His brother said, I want your bath right. Can you imagine? Delilah, you love Delilah, but Delilah doesn't love you. He looks at it and says, this is my brother. But the brother is not looking at him as this is his brother. The brother was looking at him, I want what you have. And he said, bad right. I said, I'm hungry. He said, okay, 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 okay. Take. And that one gave him, and that was the end in destiny. May you not lose your purpose in life. I didn't hear your amen. I am asking a question again. What is the Delilah of distraction distracting you? Listen, Delilah is anything that drains you. Anything that kills you. Yet, you seem to find it difficult to detach yourself from. It drains you. You yourself know. It kills you. But you are finding it difficult. One of my sons, he came back from the university and said, Papa, I need to see you. Papa, I need to see you. So I took him to, I told him to sit. He sat. And he was sharing testimony with me. He said, Papa, thank you. I said, what are you thanking me for? He said, thank you for helping me to stop masturbating. He said, all my university days, I was masturbating for three years. Non-stop. It became a habit. But thank God that during break, I came home, I confessed to you, you led me back to the Lord. You taught me some principles and you told me that all these principles I've taught you cannot work if you do not apply the principle of self-discipline. That if you don't decide to stop, you can't stop. No matter what I teach you, until you decide. He said, and sir, so you quoted that quotation that you said you formed it yourself. That grace can only be activated by determination. He said, and I determined. I made up my mind. I won't, I'm not going to do this thing anymore. I won't do it anymore. He said, Papa, I want to thank you for the past one year I have not masturbated. What's your own Delilah? Samson did many things to trick Delilah. Let's look at it. Let's look at it. Let's look at it. First, uh, sorry, Judges chapter 16. Very long reading from verse 6 to verse 21. Sagadabaskin. And Delilah said to Samson, or let's even start it from verse 4, so that you understand better that you are the one that loved Delilah. Delilah doesn't love you. And it came to pass afterward that he loved a woman. Can you see? In the valley of Sorek. That's why be careful what you love. Don't love what will destroy you. Whose name was Delilah? And the Lord of the Philistines came up unto her. And said unto her, entice him, and see wherein his great strength lieth, and by what means we may prevail against him, that we may bind him to afflict him, and we will give thee, every one of us, what? 1100 pieces of silver. Everyone. He, please put a watch around me where I can see. Okay. And Delilah said to Samson, Without arguing with them. Tell me I pray thee. Wherein thy, thy great strength lieth. And wherewith thou mightest be bound. To afflict thee. Look at that. It's such a terrible question. But Samson was in love. Just like I said. You know a lot of you say. Only Samson will pay. But you won't come back. To read Delilah at your own do you know that some of you here, your Delilah is, is uh, gambling? We have one of our sons here. He say, Papa, I got me. Papa, I got me. Papa, please deliver me. I said, What is it? He said, Tete inoni. Kimai tete o basalari mi bai. Timati ba. Timuti lo junction liba. Junction adeni jisa. Ibelo matansi. Papa, I got me. I got me. And when the time he say, Papa, I got me, I always tell him, Me will I got here. Iwaluma Iwaluma 
that there's nothing I can do. Even the master cannot do anything if you have not made up your own mind. This was where Samson was supposed to run. But see, it is terrible to be in love with what will destroy you. All of you know, we used to have this guy that used to beat Gongo here very well. You know him now. If this guy play, we will dance and dance. It's like we don't want the service to end. But we used to think he was playing under the influence of a Holy Spirit. We didn't know that he was playing under the influence of Tramador. An energy drink. Now, we were told he fell sick. They rushed him to the hospital. His kidneys was, were packing up. At UCH, the doctors told him that, young man, your kidneys are packing up. Your kidneys are giving way. But we will try to revive your kidney. But you must make sure you don't take Tramador or energy drink again. You know, at the point of death, he was saying, I promise, I won't take this thing again. I mean, bam, mean, take it. They discharged him the following week. He remembered that he had a play. That if he goes to that show, he will make money. But he was weak. He said, okay, let me take this tramadol for once. He took it again. And with energy drink to boost. They said he went to play. He played like somebody that was playing for the last time. He broke down. They rushed him back to the hospital. He died. They are buried him. Delilah overtook him. Why? He didn't conquer his Delilah. I will teach you how as we go on. Delilah is anything that, con that has control over you. And you, know, and you know, can I tell you the truth? Nothing can control you without your permission. Some of you, your Delilah is charity. You can give your eyes. The Bible didn't say we should love our neighbors more than ourselves. I was making just of one of our sons too. He gave until he gave out all his business money and went back to be working in the factory. He said, when this one come, please, can you borrow me 5,000? This one, can you borrow me 3,000? This one, can you... I thought you will pack biscuits. You pack more so that your senses can correct. The Bible didn't say give all you are. He said, love your neighbor. How? Answer me now. Ah. Oh, are you angry again? What you have not done for yourself, you are doing for people. It is the same people that we make death of you later. I have Temi to mi leru o, temi to mi leru o, temi to mi leru. Eba, pari e. Ni to ni kwe ki ni, ti 80 percent e da, 80 percent e te po ju. Ti 40 percent e da la ye ba ti fel na mi, that's me. Come back, Bimu, thank you my brother. Be careful of your, that did, be careful. He said to Samson. You know, yesterday, I, stood, I, I was here all through, and people were, people were calling from online. Thank, uh, thank God for professions. God bless you. Their, their team, they promoted our church page, and people started, people have been sending messages. So, so somebody called me yesterday. Hello, sir. You know, when good people call, bad people will also call. Yes, sir. They have not eaten in their house. And he does not even have money to go to service tomorrow, sir. Sir, whether you can send money to me. You know the first thing that came to my mind? I struggle to get a message from God in prayer and fasting. I struggle to write it down. Sacrifice. I struggle to come and preach it. Sacrifice. We pay money to put it on the internet. We we'll now pay you too for listening to it. And pay you to come and eat. I say, I'm sorry, sir. I don't have anything to give you than to give you prayer. That if you are not asking for prayer, please don't call this line. Now, and he, we, he, we dropped. Where is that? Another woman walked in and said, sir, she has diabetes. She wants to buy drugs. She needs 2,000. I now ask her. 
if I give to everybody that comes to stand in front of me, even you that have come, there will be nothing to give again. We went for evangelism yesterday. As I was distributing and bill, two guys came and said, sir, they have not eaten since morning. I said, even me too. That if you think it is because of food you want to come to Jesus, you better stay. There is hunger in Christ too. They look at me and say, yeah, there is hunger in Christ. Do you think I don't have what I'm passing through? If you want to serve Jesus, don't serve him by entice. May I not entice you into it? If you want to serve, serve. There is challenges in Christ too. They just walk away from me and collected my own bill. That's the truth. That's one truth that many preachers are not telling the people. So they will now rush to church and rush out again. Conquer your Delilah. You know why I, talk, I told you this? The Delilah of uh, charity almost destroyed my destiny. I didn't know that I have to put limits to it. You don't give the one that will destroy you. Let's continue. Let's continue. Let's continue. Let's continue. So what did I call Delilah? Anything that has control over you. Anything you love so dearly. But you know is killing you. You love it so dearly, but it is killing you. Let's go now. Where is it? And Samson said unto her, If thou bind me with seven green wits that were never dried, then shall I be weak and be as another man. Verse 8. No, I will let seven. Seven, sorry. Okay, sorry. Then the, the lords of the Philistines brought up to her seven green wheats, which had not been tried, and she bound him with them. Yes? Now, there were men lying in wait, abiding with her in the chamber. And she said unto him, The Philistines be upon the Samson. And he break the wheats as a tread of toll is broken when it touched the fire so his strength was not known wait for me here i know you will say something is stupid abby how did she get fresh weeds one how was his hands tied two and the men of philistines appeared three and he opens his, i opened his eyes how did i sleep four ah let me run oh. How many times have you told yourself to, Lord, this thing I will do for the last time, I promise I will not do it again, that you went back to it? How many times? Can you see that you are not different from Samson? They don't, they carry you, go. This will be the last. Then she came again, be fast. We don't have all the time. Now, okay, we have taken nine. And Delilah said unto Samson, Behold, thou hast mocked me and told me lies. Now tell me, I pray thee, wherewith thou mightest be bound. Eleven. And he said unto her, If they bind me fast with new ropes, that never were occupied, then shall I be weak and be as another man. And he said unto her, Okay, I've, I've taken this. 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, we don't have all the time. Delilah therefore took new ropes and bound him therewith and said unto him, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And there were liars in wait abiding in the chamber, and he break them from off his arms like a thread. And Delilah said again, can you imagine? Every single time he told her a secret, the Philistines will come and the secret will be used against him. Now, I'm just using this to show you that the devil is using what you love to distract you. And every single time you are saying, I won't fall to this again. You find yourself falling. Do you know why? You have not taken time to conquer your Delilah. 
Beloved, what do you love? What is distracting your purpose? Your purpose? Samson for once did not deliver his people. His, sorry, he delivered his purpose. All the while, he was busy fighting the Philistine. It was because of women. I'm asking you again. What is distracting you? Now, it will lead us to point number three. Number three. Taught the truth. Something was captured. Something was captured by his enemies. And this also should show us that we can be captured <laughs> if we don't conquer what we love. Sister, something was captured. Though. Brother, something was captured. And it should teach us too that if something can be captured, you can be captured. I attended the conference and the man of God that was said, his father in the Lord. Every one of them respects him at Imo State. A very big man of God. A man of God that everybody sees as a holy man. But we, they were all shocked. The day they read, they, they saw it on the news. That Bishop Susu and so died in a hotel room. But the lady that should give them full details to, the, to his death was caught in the same hotel room. Ah! So when they interviewed the lady, the lady said they have been dating for years, but she wanted to get married. The bishop is a married man, no? but nobody knew. Anytime they want to commit immorality, they will travel from, from Imo State to Potter Court so that nobody will see them. So this particular, they went to tell bishop, bishop, I'm getting married. Bishop said, let's do this thing now for the last time before you will go to your husband's house. And this bishop will preach fire. While he was doing, his heart failed and died. When the lady wanted to jump out, to run out of the hotel, they, 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 they apprehended her that you are two that came. One of you cannot go. He said he's sleeping. Wait for him to wake up. When they held her for like 10 hours, the man, they went to break down the door. They saw his dead body. You know what this man of God told us? He said they buried this bishop. The, the burial of a dog is better than the burial they did for that bishop. Not one person cried. Not one praise worship song. Not one prayer. They just would dump him. All of them went to the gravesite, dump him. His family did not cry. His children did not cry. They just had to bury him to fulfill their righteousness. But beloved, you know why? That bishop never thought he could be caught. And it will be dead. Samson too didn't know that he could be caught and hang me arise and do like this. Where he was doing like this, they slapped him behind. The first thing they removed was his two eyes. Do you think they can't catch you if you don't conquer what you They can. If care is not taken, you'll be buying diabetes drug, you. And you may not live long again to fulfill the purpose of God for your life. That's why. Watch what you love. Do not allow your love for anything to take you out of the purpose of God for your life. Listen, the original reason why you are living is to fulfill purpose. If you no longer have purpose in view, you have no reason to live. They removed his eyes. They reduced him to the point that he became an object of mockery. It was something I like that. No? <laughs> Don't let the devil drag you to that point. 
my mentor was sharing with us in one of a meeting, one of their meetings, he said there's one of their branch pastors that was doing, you know, and uh, he joined the group in church. You know, there is, there's a group in church that is not inaugurated by the pastor. It's called the gossip group. People that join those groups, they don't prosper in church because the anointing of the pastor don't work, won't want work for them again. It's not, the, it's not the God that inaugurated that group. It's not the pastor. It's the devil's group in church. So this pastor, my mentor told us, joined that group and left the, left, left the branch. Told him, no, no, no. God has not called me to start branch. Can I tell you this truth? Call of God can be from direct hearing of God's voice or his servant can send you. But once you are convinced in your heart, said to. So this brother, they did visa for him. He traveled. You know, most of you think when you travel, you have got into heaven. Ah. <laughs> I, 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 I am listening to the, I've been listening to the, the series of uh, uh, Pastor Lumide Emmanuel on Japa. He's having a series on Japa. Yesterday, we, I and my wife were listening to one. A young man that traveled to Norway. I will finish that story. They didn't tell him that in Norway, the, the cold there does not have part two. So he dressed like me like this, got to Norway. He died at the airport of cold. What is Jackpa now? But agents to buy a shake, come on, come on, Airport, airport, Lokusi. He now told us one again. There's another one that left South Africa to Jerusalem. He said as he saw them coming for tourism and he, he rushed out. He said, sir, please help me. If you can get me any amount, I want to leave Jerusalem. He said, the, the agents told me that there is work in Jerusalem. He said, work, Jerusalem. The only work in Jerusalem is in the farm. He said, we have been inside the farm for 60 days. As I heard that Nigerians are coming for pilgrimage, I decided to come out, sir. Anything. You see that? I want to go back to South Africa, even come back to Nigeria. I'm suffering here. Okay, the story of my mentor was sharing. That's why those of you that want to Japa too, pray very well and let God lead you. I have one documentary. I will play it last Sunday of this month. Nigerians that receive a, that did visa of a, a caregiver job in UK. You know that's, the visa is authentic. Once you apply, they give you a caregiver job visa. It's authentic. You can travel to UK. Very, very authentic. It's work permit from here. But no caregiver job. And if you have caregiver job visa, you can't do any other job. So you have to wait. So Nigerians were lining up at the food bank to beg for food. They interviewed some. They, back, they took, put their back like this. Some of them, they said they should cover their eyes. This one said he's a bank manager in Nigeria. He sold his house. He sold his cars to move his entire family to UK. They are begging for food. So my mentor said, this pastor traveled. When he now got to UK, they are in their church have started a, a branch in UK. The pastor of the branch there, that supposed to be the member here, has a company. So this pastor is now working under their member as a staff in his company in UK. So this particular day, this member, this, you know, was now going through, uh, my mentor said, he was now going through their magazine. His staff now said, ah, do you know Bishop Adilaku? He said, yes, that's my father in the Lord. I'm running, we are running a church here. He said, now ask him, do you know him too? He said, yeah, I used to know him. So, you remember now called Bishop. Bishop said, he was our pastor. He said, sir, if you know the kind of job he's doing here, don't be distracted. Samson was reduced to a meal grinder. It's a big stone. As he's turning it, he's grinding the meal. 
the, the man that was destined to be the deliverer of Israel was reduced to a mill grinder. One Lord Dawa. That was what he was doing. Number four. Do you know that upon all this, Samson still did not realize his purpose? Upon all this, he still did not realize his purpose. Show me verse 21 of, uh, of um, Judges 16. We'll take it from there. Judges 16 from verse 21. But the Philistines took his eyes, okay, jump to verse 25. Let's move fast. I have three minutes more. And it came to pass, when their hearts were merry, that Samson said, uh, they said, call for Samson. Yes, where am I? Go on, go on. Call for Samson so that he might entertain us. Do you know that the prayer Samson prayed was not, oh Lord, now use me to deliver Israel for the last time. He said that I may avenge for my eyes. Let's see it. And Samson said unto the, the lad, move to the next verse. Yes. And Samson called on the Lord and said, O Lord God, remember me. I pray thee and strengthen me. I pray thee. Only this once, O God, that I may be what? At once avenge the Felicians for what? So from the beginning to his death, all his fight was for himself. Samson had no record in heaven for any work done. Because he didn't deliver Israel. Yes, here the Bible says the people he killed, the Philistines he killed in, in his death were more than those he killed when he was alive. But it was not for his purpose. Biggest lesson. Hey, why? This is why you should take note for me. Where are you? He's the one that takes my coats. Give the camera to somebody else. You always want to do everything. You want to go there? So you. Listen. Always be conscious. Big, biggest lesson. Always be conscious of your divine purpose. Not just of your present situation or need. That's the major lesson I want to teach you this morning. Always be con Your greatest consciousness must always be for your divine purpose. Not just to meet your present need. Not just to satisfy your present, yourself as a present. Yes, Number two, under, still under it. Purpose is your reason for living. The day you compromise your purpose, that is the day you signed out of the act. Purpose is your reason for living. The day you compromise your purpose is the day you signed out out of the art. Even while you are still alive, you have signed out. Please take note of this and write it down and register it in your heart. Purpose is the reason for living. Purpose is the reason for living. Purpose is the reason for living. That's why you keep asking yourself, am I fulfilling 
purpose. If nobody is sharing testimony, if lives are not being changed, if things are not happening for good, I will close down this church. I'm telling you the fact. In our struggling days, ask my wife, when we talk and talk and talk, yes, we are struggling, we are going through things. And I, we ask ourselves, what do we do? We always resolve. We know that God has called us. We guide our lives with that, with that one focus. God has called us. We have families abroad. One of my family members was telling me I was supposed to be somewhere in, in Canada in either, uh, uh, I think it's October. And he said, Pastor, are you not coming again? I said, Auntie, I can't come. She said, why? I said, I told you what is in front of me. I told you my plans. I told you what I'm doing. <sighs> she said, well, maybe we told you that you will not come. Maybe we told, the day we were talking about it in January that we should, we should uh, 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 that, uh, that you say, okay, you have agreed that we should send invitation. We knew that you would not come. I said, no. Our lives are guided by the purpose of God. You know where David, uh, so, Solomon, uh, sorry, Samson missed it was when he began to compromise purpose. Take note of this again. Take note of this. As I wrote it down. When I, whenever, I, whenever I think of Esau, I learn that purpose will always clash with our immediate need. Write it down as I'm saying it. This is my conclusion about life. Whenever I think of Esau, I learn that purpose will always clash with our immediate needs. And when, sorry, and that when it does, I should choose purpose rather than my immediate satisfaction. Should I come again? Whenever I think of Esau, I learn that purpose will, all, will always clash with my immediate needs. And that when it does, I should choose purpose rather than my immediate satisfaction. Then put in bracket, in bracket, I will rather remain hungry and still have my bat right. Than to act, sorry, than to eat the food, sorry, than to eat Jacob's red pottage and lose it. That's in bracket. Let me come again. I will rather remain hungry and still have my bat right than to eat Jacob's red pottage and lose it. Then the last quote. I wrote this down when I was studying yesterday. Even if a life of discipline cost me pain today, I will not compromise because I know it will usher me into a glorious future. Shall I come again? Even if a life of discipline cost me pain today. I will not compromise because I know it will usher me into a glorious future. Leaders, I summarize with this statement. Learn from Esau. Because he wanted to meet his immediate need. He compromised the future. Leaders, learn from Samson. 
Because he did not control what he loved to do. Love, he, lo he loved women. And I told you that your Delilah is not, may not even be evil. Something you love is killing you. It's affecting you negatively. But you don't want to stop it. Something that has control over you. And I told you that nothing can have control over you without your permission. I want to rest my case. Go and tame your Delilah. Let us pray. Exalted Father, we thank you for today's leadership meeting again. Take all the glory for teaching us, Lord. Give us grace that Delilah will not have dominion over us anymore in the name of Jesus. We receive the courage to tame Delilah. Lord, we ask, oh God, for the fresh picture of our purpose to reappear in our hearts, to steer our commitment in us. Thank you for it is done. In Jesus' name of bread. And amen. Can we share the grace together in fellowship? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now.